I want to love Firefox. I really do. But they just make it so hard for me too. So I've been using Chromium based browsers for a long time. I did a video a while back about ungoogled Chromium, which is the browser that I've been using for a while. But as you probably know, one of the big problems with Chromium browsers is that they are soon migrating to Manifest V3. And in doing so, they're killing off a lot of great extensions. Most notably, a lot of ad blocker and tracker blocker extensions are just not going to work as well as they used to. And blocking trackers is pretty important to me. So that's why I've been thinking of going back to Firefox where the extensions are still going to be as powerful as they've ever been. But every time I open up Firefox, I am just reminded why I hate this browser. And the main reason, it's pretty apparent as you look at this, Firefox is just loaded with garbage after garbage right out of the gate. So they have this welcome screen, they have uh, this Firefox view tab. I have no idea what this does. They want you to sync with your phone. They want you to create a Mozilla account. I don't want to create a Mozilla account. They want me to sign up for a pocket right here. They have this pocket icon right here. And it is very difficult to actually remove pocket from Firefox. And if you don't know what this is, this is a service that allows you to save articles. But if you sign up for an account with pocket, it also tracks all of the articles that you're reading. And it even sends information to advertisers. If you don't believe me, check their privacy policy. It's all right there. And for a supposedly privacy conscious organization like Mozilla to be promoting this and whenever you try to search, uh, of course, the default search engine is Google. So I typed something and of course it is sending all of this to Google. If you open up a new tab page, they have links to some of the worst websites on the internet. There is tons of telemetry and even Google Analytics baked into the web browser, sending all kinds of data back. And of course, they say it's all anonymized but I don't want them to send any information to Google. It just doesn't make any sense. There are just so many bad defaults and useless features baked into the browser by default. It is just extremely frustrating every time I download this. There is uh, complimentary ads here in your settings menu. If you want ads to download Firefox Mobile, I don't. I just want a browser that browses the web, not shoves a whole bunch of garbage in my face. You might think this is a little bit trivial, but if you actually want to go through the work of removing all of this garbage and cruft, then it's going to be a lot of work. A lot of this you can't even disable from the settings menu. You have to really get your hands dirty by going into about config. Uh, there's a scary screen here warning you do not proceed. And then you have to go through a bunch of weird random settings here on endless list in order to actually tune it the way that you want it to. And on top of that, I also have almost no faith in Mozilla as an organization. They just make so many bad decisions, it's mind boggling. Like laying off a big percentage of their workforce while increasing their CEO's salary. Or the fact that they get all of their money from Google. And that's why they have Google as their default search engine. But if you actually want to make a donation to Mozilla, thinking that, oh, okay, I, I want to donate towards the development of Firefox. If you donate to Mozilla, it's not going towards Firefox development, it's going towards their organization's goals, which is just a bunch of random useless things in my opinion. I would really like to donate towards Firefox, but there's literally no way to donate to Firefox development. And Mozilla has just made so many blunders and bad decisions over the years that I really despise Mozilla as an organization. And yet, in spite of all of that, I am still switching to Firefox as my main browser now. But the way that I'm going to do it is I'm going to have to remove a lot of the junk first. I wish there was just a script or something I could download in order to make all of the things I hate about this browser go away. And there actually is a script like that, and I will show you in this video. And once we use this, you will find that Firefox is actually pretty good. We get rid of almost everything that annoys me. And for anything else that you would wish to change, it is simple to do it. So the script that I'm talking about is actually this right here. It is a GitHub repository called BetterFox. And what it is, is it's basically a user.js file if you don't know anything about Firefox configuration, this is a file that you can add and it will basically set a whole bunch of configuration options for you without you having to go in and manually change all these settings. That would take an eternity. So this is a handy document that does all of that for you. And so what this is going to do is going to remove a lot of the annoyances that I have about Firefox like Pocket and all of these useless services. It's also going to make it more secure and private by default by removing a lot of services that ping back to Google servers or Mozilla servers, such as telemetry and a whole bunch of other things that we don't need. And it's even going to give you a few settings just to make some sites a little bit faster. 
So I'd say all in all, this is a very useful script. Let's go ahead and install this. So I'm going to assume that you just downloaded Firefox, but if you have already used Firefox, maybe you've changed some settings and you want to start from scratch, uh, you would just type in the address bar about colon profiles. You'll be taken to this page right here and you can create a new profile here. That's what I would recommend you do. So let's just click create a new profile, click next, and then let's call this better Fox and click finish. You will now have a new profile down here called Better Fox. Let's just launch this in a new browser, and this should automatically be set as the default profile. So whenever you start up Firefox, you will be presented with this profile right here. But of course, we want to remove all this garbage like I was talking about. So let's open up the directory. So you would just click this Open Directory button to open it in your file browser. I already have it open over here. It's going to be Firefox, and then better fox or whatever you're going to name it and inside here you're going to be wanting to make a new file called user.js and we can actually just copy and paste this from the github so let's click this go here and just copy all of this paste this in here and if you actually want to see what this is all doing then you can scroll through these individual files. This user.js file will not really explain everything that's going on here, but if you go into the individual scripts right here, like for instance, FastFox is going to add a few features to make the web browsing a little bit faster. You can see all of these preferences and even some preferences that you might want to toggle on as well. So if you want to find some additional options, you can just look in here. I would recommend doing that. But by default, the options are going to be pretty good. So let's see what happens if we just add this user.js and nothing else. Let's go ahead and save this. And then we can go back to our about profiles. Let's just relaunch this. So close out of the browser if you have it up already. And so this is the new browser with all of the better Fox configuration added. And so we removed some useless features. Uh, we no longer have Firefox view. And we no longer have the Mozilla account if you want to sync your account to Mozilla. I personally have never used this feature. I found it useless, but if you can, you can restore some of these features that it has disabled. It is pretty easy. I'll show you how to do that in a bit, but by default, a lot of these settings are going to make a lot more sense. So it's going to have strict tracking protection by default, just to give you more protection and more privacy. It is going to disable the login manager by default because you really shouldn't be using that. You should be using a different password manager, not one baked into your browser. I believe it is still going to default to Google as the main search engine, so you are going to want to change that, at least to DuckDuckGo. At least it's better than Google. But other than that, all of the other defaults should be pretty good. And so already I like this a whole lot better than the original version of Firefox. It's not showing me a bunch of garbage websites whenever I open up a new tab. It's not promoting Pocket to me. But let's say that maybe you like some of these settings and you want to get them back. Let's go over how to do that. So let's go back to Better Fox. And I'll leave a link to this as well, but this is some common overrides or some common preferences that you may want to change. So maybe you really do like Firefox Sync and you use it all the time to sync Firefox with your phone and your browser. What you can do is take a look here. Let's scroll down to Firefox Sync and then we would just update this right here. We can just copy this line. We can copy the comment so you know what it does as well. We can go back over here to user.js and just paste this in at the bottom. So my overrides is going to be right here. And if you save this, now Firefox accounts will be back. You can restore Firefox view if you want. You can block embedded tweets, which will break some websites, but will give you more privacy. Something else that you may want to enable is going to be Google Safe Browsing. And this is going to be a service that pings some Google servers, but it will check if you're on a malicious website and it will tell you to go back. And it actually disables this by default. But to be honest, you probably don't need this, especially if you're using something like uBlock Origin. And of course, if you install this, then you basically have to install uBlock Origin as well. uBlock Origin is one of the must-have extensions. So definitely download this if you haven't already. But by default, uBlock Origin will actually block a lot of malicious websites for you. So say, for example, we mistype YouTube and go to yoitube.com. This is a malicious website. And if I try to go here, uBlock will block it for me. So I don't really need Google service to protect me. Uh, uBlock Origin will handle most of that and just using your common sense will protect you against the rest. So I would not enable this, but if you want to, you can. 
And there are a few other options in here that you might want. You might want it to remember addresses and credit cards for you. I don't, but you can if you want to. And of course, you would just add that to the bottom of this document here. Oh, and for one more little bonus, if you want smooth scrolling, a lot of people don't like the scrolling in Firefox out of the box. It is a little bit janky. And so they also have this script smoothfox.js. And you can try out these. To be honest, it didn't really do too much for me. I don't know if it's the way I have things set up, but it didn't really give me a noticeable difference. But you can try adding these, uh, just one of these options right here. So you can copy all of these and put it in your smooth fox section here. And you can save that, restart your web browser, and maybe your scrolling will be a little bit smoother. I didn't really notice the difference, but you might. That is a common complaint that a lot of people have about Firefox. But once you have all that done, then Firefox works pretty good. And you would only need to configure a few additional settings. I don't really want a bookmarks bar on my new tab page, so I can disable that. And of course, you can go into settings and change a few more things if you want. But this is probably the easiest way that you can make your Firefox experience a whole lot better. And with this, I am actually going to use Firefox as my full-time browser again. I know with all the mean things I said about Firefox, you would think that I wouldn't go back. But once you do make a lot of changes to the configuration, Firefox is very good to use. And a lot of people complain that it's a lot slower than something like Chrome and that a lot of websites break using Firefox. It hasn't been the case for me. Everything works pretty much the same. And you're not going to notice any big difference if you're switching from something like Chrome or Brave. And so I would recommend you give Firefox a try. But of course, if you're more privacy conscious, then BetterFox is not going to disable everything out of the box. It's still going to make some requests to Mozilla. I think it might still have a few pings to Google servers, but it's going to be much less than it is by default. And what I like about BetterFox specifically is it's going to give you much better privacy and security, but without breaking any websites. Because a lot of popular user JS files that claim to give you more Firefox privacy are actually going to break a whole lot of websites in the name of privacy. And so maybe you've used something like Arkenfox before. It is just going to break a lot of websites on the internet by default. And there are all kinds of people complaining about all the things that it does. And some other projects like this, you really have to go in and configure everything to make it work for a normal human being. But what's good about BetterFox is that it's not going to break anything by default. And it just gives you a lot of sane default configuration options. You're not going to have to change too many things once you install it. It's if you want a better Firefox experience, but you don't want to do that much work in configuring it. But if you want to use your JS that's even more focused on privacy, then you can check out something like Arkenfox. That is actually what I use at the moment, but it requires a whole bunch of configuration in order to get it usable. So I'll probably do a whole other video on that in the future. And there's some forks of that that go even further, but all of that's for another video. This is kind of for the normal person who just wants a nice Firefox setup without all the junk. So I would definitely recommend switching back to Firefox if it's been a while since you've used it and checking out this GitHub repository, of course, to make things much better. But that's all there is to this video. And now even a Mozilla hater like me can enjoy Firefox thanks to BetterFox.